please, let me ask those who should not be in the room to move and make the space. Let me ask for those of you who still have the space to sit down. And let us start so we are not too late. Good morning or good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Rastislav Kacur. I'm the president of the Slovak Atlantic Commission. And that is a great privilege and great honor to welcome you all officially at the 8th Bratislava Globtech Security Conference. Eight years, it's not too much. Many of you coming frequently, many of you since the beginning, some new guests. Welcome to all of you. I hope you're going to feel good. I want to have a special recognition for some of the special guests I see right in front of me. You all know Prime Minister Tito, who honored us with his presence and uh, welcoming remarks. But uh, I'm so delighted to see all four ministers of Visegrad Four being in the room. The forum is intended to send a strong regional voice. The Polish presidency set the bar very high. Minister Sikorski is here with us and is handing his buck uh, to Hungarian Minister Martoni. Uh, but I welcome all four ministers of Visegrad. Uh, Prime Minister Vukanovic, that's a great honor to have you here. I cannot uh, omit somebody who is so dear to me and I appreciate very much uh, Professor Dr. Zbigniew Zinski as the great political thinker and strategic thinker, one of the top uh, in the world, a, a warm welcome to you. Uh, but all ministers, um, ambassadors, ladies and gentlemen, excellencies, whatever, you know, I would be a too long list if I wanted to welcome all of you uh, personally and that would be too much. Um, I cannot say nothing but uh, to thank all of our strategic partners without whom this would not be possible. So first of all, let me sit on uh, two uh, co-chairs, Minister Sikorski and Minister Leitchak and Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Poland and Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs and uh, European Affairs of the Slovak Republic. Other strategic partners for Slo uh, to the conference are Center for European Studies from Brussels, Visegrad Fund, Konrad Adenauer Stiftung, done also in a very close cooperation and thanks for that to Polish Institute uh, for, um, for uh, International Affairs, PISN. NATO, European Commission, Ministry of Defense, PAC, European Council Balkans, Embassy of the United States, uh, Carnegie Europe, USAID. These are the main strategic partners for all of us. Thank you very much. But this would not be all, uh, picture would not be complete because we don't want to have only people who are elected who run politics who do decisions about our future, but in every healthy uh, stable structure stands on three legs. One is the executive uh, elected politicians, but second is a business community and business leaders and captain of business industry who are here. We are also uh, people from think tank community, academia, those smart brains who help us to enlighten and bring light where the shadow is cast. In others, the second pillar which I mentioned are those who contribute as well and without whom we would not be able to run conferences like this because it's quite costly, frankly. Uh, exclusive partner BAE Systems, I have to stop here for a second because this is the partner who is with us continuously, constantly since the beginning for eight years. And I want to thank you and I'm delighted you've been doing this. You're not only partner to Slovak government by bring uh, a, a new esprit uh, uh, to s Slovak business as well. It's Saab, Lotus, BMW, our long-term uh, partner, and Kempinski Hotel for the third time, Microsoft, Eon, Lynx, BHP, uh, Best Hotel Properties, and Sikorsky, uh, and United uh, Technologies Company. Um, thank you all for that. Ladies and gentlemen, this year we will take a great stock of a great agenda, but uh, we will see. I'm not going to go into this detail. I have high expectations myself. Let me just formally, for the beginning, welcome again Prime Minister Fico and ask him to address you with his welcoming remarks. I just have to remind you, those who were here last year, last year was the first time Prime Minister came and addressed the forum. He was fresh, he was a freshman in this. He is not freshman in politics, don't take me wrong. He's a seasoned guy, you see that. But he was a freshly uh, appointed and assigned uh, Prime Minister, and this was the first opportunity to raise the flag and say this is our foreign policy and security vision for the new government. He set the bar high, 
and all of them who were here, even those who might be critical uh, for his government, said this was a good speech, uh, but we will see in one year how he delivered. We got one year, and I have to tell you, Prime Minister, that on the foreign policy and security, you delivered well. And I want to welcome you here at the conference, and I ask you kindly to deliver the welcome remarks. Prime Minister Fico. Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I have accepted with a pleasure the opportunity to make an opening address uh, at the Globsec Forum again after one year. The program of Globsec is nowadays uh, much wider. Globsec has grown to a major international event in our region, covering uh, all spheres of international relations. Let me congratulate and thank the organizers for achieving uh, such a high status of uh, our conference. It uh, attracts attention of our partners to Slovakia and stresses its active role at the international scene, what I am, as a Prime Minister, proud of. Security represented uh, the basis for your deliberations in the past years, and uh, rightly so. Security is the key prerequisite for positive development in all areas, including economy, and we should never take it uh, for granted. With our historical experience in Central Europe, we are especially sensitive in this regard. On the other hand, I share the evaluation of those who state that in the transatlantic area, we have achieved the highest standard of security and so we can focus our time and energy to enhance our economic stability and prosperity. We cannot uh, overlook the dramatic situation in Syria. We cannot neglect the developments uh, on the Korean Peninsula. However, the key to our European success, the key to our influence in the world, the key to our global engagement lies today in stabilizing the European economy and restarting its growth and in completing the unfinished business of the unification of our continent, both in terms of making the integration larger and deeper. I am glad that the organizers correctly reflected this also in the program of this conference. A year ago, just a few days after the new Slovak government was created, I spoke from this place about the foreign and security policy priorities of the new Slovak government. Looking back, I can say with satisfaction that our foreign policy has been clear, focused, and as I promised uh, then, mature and responsible in pursuing our interests. Ladies and gentlemen, Slovakia commemorates the 20th anniversary of its independent statehood this year. Let me make a short remark on this occasion. I will not speak about political leaders and personalities, but about our people, Slovak citizens of every age, social status, political orientation, or nationality. Throughout these two decades, we have proved that we form a responsible political nation. We have proved that we can manage uh, our domestic affairs democratically and lead our country towards prosperity and stability to pay our debts and show solidarity to those in need. We are respected members of the European Union and NATO, which provide us with the highest level of security and stability ever. This forms the basis of our commitment to contribute actively to their further strengthening. Today we are providers rather than consumers of security and stability, contributors to overall economic prosperity and providers of donor assistance. Ladies and gentlemen, strong pro-European mandate, which my government gained in the last uh, year's elections, has been the basis for the foreign and European policy of my government. We have backed our pro-European stance with a concrete, responsible, and constructive approach. We were an integral part of the efforts to stabilize Eurozone, starting with the ESM, 
through the fiscal compact to emerging banking union. Seeking optimal ways for the functioning of the EU in general and the Eurozone in particular is a long-term process. However, I believe that we made a substantial step forward to overcome the crisis last year. Fiscal consolidation is the cornerstone in the process of the economic recovery. On the EU level, we have taken a number of measures in order to ensure better budgetary discipline. Nevertheless, just agreeing on mechanisms, adopting rules is not enough if we are unable to stick to them. In Slovakia, we are working hard to fulfill the task of uh, pushing down the level of public finance deficit. We intend to meet our deficit target as stipulated in the Stability and Growth Pact and uh, bring it to 3% of GDP this year. In order to achieve this goal, we have to make difficult decisions on both spending and taxation. Nevertheless, the Slovak government is prepared to take additional measures if changes in the economic environment so require to avoid breaching the 3% ceiling this year. The consolidation effort does not end in 2013. We will continue to decrease our deficit of public finances with the medium-term goal of bringing Slovakia's structural deficit below 0.5% of GDP. At the same time, I wish to stress that our consolidation efforts are not carried out in order to satisfy the institutions in Brussels. We do so because there is no other alternative if we want to achieve long-term stabilization of our public finances. We do so because we are members of the club with the rules that we agreed to respect. We do so because the European Union has to regain the trust of markets and the trust of our citizens. However, consolidation efforts shall not ignore other important economic aspects. We have to take into account the high level of unemployment, especially among young people, and focus our efforts on generating growth and tackling unemployment. Lack of action on growth and unemployment could lead to a lost generation among the youth and increased social tension. Thus, we are prepared to discuss the optimal pace of consolidation in the future, so as to ensure a proper balance between fiscal consolidation and economic growth. We welcome that the European Council reiterated the importance of targeting youth unemployment. We will follow closely and implement those EU initiatives which could improve the perspectives of youth. Last year, we made use of the reallocation of EU funds to tackle youth unemployment, but if rules for the use of EU structural funds were less rigid, we could do even more. In this context of consolidation efforts, I must also stress another important principle. The same rules must apply to all EU member states, big or small alike. If there is to be flexibility on the speed of fiscal consolidation, it must be equally applicable to all member states of the European Union. Ladies and gentlemen, the agreement on the multi-annual financial framework among the member states is an important signal that the EU is capable of finding solutions. The utmost priority now is to reach an agreement with the European Parliament as well, in order to ensure that all programs and instruments are operational in time. We are prepared to deal with these issues, which are of particular importance to the European Parliament. In our view, the most problematic issue could be the compulsory and comprehensive revision of the multi-annual financial framework. We prefer to avoid any revision that would lead to the reopening of the agreed allocations. Especially for the cohesion policy, we need predictability of expenditures due to programming procedures. It took us nearly two years at the level of member states to reach an agreement. And starting this extremely difficult process in three years again is, in my view, not the best option for us. I think that we should do our utmost to reach early an overall compromise deal. Otherwise, the European Union runs the risk of losing much of its credibility vis-a-vis -vis, uh, its citizens and foreign partners as well. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, 
Slovakia supports the deeper integration of the European Union. We understand that the common currency cannot exist anymore in the conditions of a selective integration. That is just a monetary integration. The continuation of our economic currency cannot go on as initially constructed. We need to complete the genuine economic and monetary union. Addressing these soft spots in the construction of Eurozone is a must, and it is clear that strengthened integration is required. We support the idea of completing the economic and monetary union based on four pillars as set out in the President Van Rompuy last year report. We need changes that will deepen the level of integration with the primary aim of securing stability in the European Union, Eurozone, and preventing future crises. When building new European mechanisms and structures, the key principles we constantly emphasize are solidarity, responsibility, and inclusiveness. It is very important that all EU countries, including those outside Eurozone, can fully participate if they wish so. The agreement on the single supervisory mechanism is a very important step in the building of banking union. This success should inspire us to continue. However, the focus on the speedy conclusion of this process cannot be at the expense of its quality. The two other pillars, fiscal and economic, are closely interconnected. We support the strict rules for economic policies and budgetary discipline, as well as measures striving towards better control and coordination of these policies at the European level. In this regard, we are also supportive of the idea of contracts for competitiveness and growth between member states and European institutions. At the same time, we need more time for a thorough discussion about well-balanced solidarity mechanisms, which should provide support to countries undergoing structural reforms in the framework of contracts with the EU institutions. We have to avoid possible moral hazard, a situation in which a country could delay important reforms and wait for a contract with the financial aid. We are strengthening our partnership with the other global economies and working on trade and investment agreements, for example, with the United States or Japan. Slovakia is largely an export-oriented economy. Therefore, we strongly welcome the long-awaited report of the high-level group, which recommends the launch of negotiations of the transatlantic trade and investment partnership between the EU and the United States, and hope the agreement could be signed next year. We have a unique opportunity, uh, given this difficult period, to establish far the largest free trade agreement in the world history beneficial for both sides of the Atlantic. For the EU, the agreement could provide 119 billion euro a year in economic gains. Today, when uh, the EU copes with a certain, mainly economic and financial challenges, we need new enthusiasm, as well as so courage to seek solutions that would bring new impulses for integration and that would strengthen solidarity among the nations and states on our continent. That is the most effective barrier to nationalism and populism that has the tendency to regain ground in times of crisis. Ladies and gentlemen, our understanding of security and stability is wider than just military. It has its economic, social, and cultural dimensions. That is the philosophy we share with our partners in the European Union and apply in our policies towards third countries. Our effort is aimed at resolving not just the immediate, but also structural roots of conflicts. This understanding of security leads our efforts in our neighborhood, in particular in the Western Balkans as well as in the countries of Eastern Partnership. In this context, we should not forget that the process of European integration is still unaccomplished. There are still nations in our eastern, southeastern, and even northern neighborhood that aspire for their place in our common European home and transatlantic community of democratic nations, and they need our help. 
Slovakia received a similar support in previous years. We look forward to Croatia joining us in the European Union soon, and we hope the enlargement process will continue. On the other hand, the most important role in the process is placed by the aspirant countries. We can advise and advocate, but they have to perform. Our experience shows that reforms do pay off. This is the key message we try to get across to our partners in the Western Balkans or in the countries of the Eastern Partnership. Ladies and gentlemen, in a more global scale, Slovak engagement in Afghanistan is our major activity in supporting international crisis management operations and missions. Our contribution to ISAF is still the largest among operations and missions we participate in. We will step up our effort to help the Afghan authorities to successfully complete the process of transition. Ladies and gentlemen, individual national options and opportunities of Central European states to contribute to influencing European and even world affairs are limited. Cooperation with our neighbors in all areas of common interest presents the top priority of my government. Therefore, as a mean of moving these relations to even higher level than before, my government introduces the mechanism of joint meetings of governments with the neighboring countries. We have accomplished such intergovernmental meetings already with our Czech and Polish friends, and we are preparing similar meetings with Austria and Hungary. Cooperation in the framework of the Visegrad Group has played a central role in developing regional cooperation in Central Europe. Together, we have already achieved a lot, but there is much more that needs and can be done. Therefore, I am glad to see that there is also a lot of political will to continue and deepen our cooperation. Last year, I asked why the Visegrad four countries couldn't be at the forefront of the smart defense efforts. Since then, our experts from both governmental and the non-governmental sectors made a lot of good work and moved us closer not only to the formation of Visegrad EU Better Group, which is expected to be on standby in the first half of 2016. They have as well identified a number of options how to make our cooperation even deeper, more systematic, and thus more beneficial for all of us. The lack of natural energy sources in Central Europe and our dependence on import highlights the importance of energy security as an area of cooperation and common interest. Learning lessons from the January 2009 gas crisis, we are working on north-south interconnectors with all our neighbors that will diversify routes for energy sources and thus strengthen the security of the whole Central European region. Ladies and gentlemen, looking at this year's Global Security Forum agenda, I am happy to see that we will discuss and hopefully try to find answers on relevant issues of concern for the Central European region and the transatlantic cooperation. I wish you fruitful deliberations and look forward to hearing the conclusions from uh, our conference. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Prime. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. And if you forgive me, I still need to do one thing because I'll burn in hell. I forgot to invite uh, President Wilde. He was the one on first on my list, but I'm uh, also through to my age, D of threes, and uh, my excitement. I've been turned on with this microphone. I forget. I apologize for that, <laughs> Mr. Prime Minister. Thank you very much uh, for this uh, introduction, uh, and thank you very much for taking your time out of your busy schedule. And. Uh, We'll see you, I uh, hope, next year, Lobsek. Uh, I hope so. I hope so. La ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, please uh, let me invite two co-chairmen co of, of the conference, Deputy Prime Minister Leitschak and Foreign Minister Sikorski from Poland, to say a couple of welcome remarks to all of you, and then we immediately followed by Visegrad Four Ministers panel. Uh, Deputy Prime Minister Lajczak, uh, Minister Sikorski, please.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. It's great to see you all here in Bratislava. Globsec has become an exceptional forum, annually bringing key policymakers, experts, businessmen and journalists to Central Europe. And I'm pleased to stand here today as the co-chair of one of the top security and foreign policy fora in the world. A forum that has managed to aggregate over 700 guests from over 60 countries who will discuss burning matters of international politics on podiums as well as behind the scenes. This takes more than skills. You need vision, dedication, and persistence to succeed. Let me therefore use this opportunity to express my great respect to you, Ambassador Kacha, and especially to your young team at the Slovak Atlantic Commission for the excellent work you do year after year. Being a veteran of Globsec, I must say that the Slovak Atlantic Commission, its resolve, creativity, and ability to reinvent itself never stops surprising me. Over the past eight years, the Slovak Atlantic Commission managed to transform itself from a student organization to one of the forefront NGOs in the region, excelling in not only high-profile events such as Globsec, but also in transferring know-how, policy shaping, and foreign policy analysis. I'm proud that right from the very beginning, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Slovak Republic has been a part of it. I perfectly remember the first Globsec held as a student initiative at the Congress room of our ministry. Although the tradition is still here, I dare to say that today it is a completely different story. After 80 years of its existence, Globsec has become a forum that has outlived all expectations, as well as traditional Central European themes, and became one of a kind security and foreign policy platform where high level foreign policy is made and discussed. The fact is that Globsec has walked a long way in a short time. Today, we are at this beautiful venue, together with hundreds of distinguished guests, at an event that includes dozens of side meetings and policy sessions. The program is indeed full of interesting sessions, but I particularly appreciate the regional dimension of the forum. Globsec is, after all, also about amplifying the voice, voice of Central Europe. I'm glad that it has become a traditional platform for the Visegrad Four Ministers of Foreign Affairs meeting and that this provides an ideal opportunity to present our central European perspectives in debates with our partners. Ladies and gentlemen, to conclude, let me wish you a lot of vibrant and fruitful debates with outcomes that will be transformed into real politics. I wish that Globsec discussions will inspire you even long after you return back home from Slovakia. I thank you for your attention. Mr. Minister, thank you very much for your very kind words and for your support, uh, support of the foreign ministry, but also for your personal support, and thank you for being such a friend. Uh, Minister Sikorsky, please, uh, let me invite you to the floor. Ladies and gentlemen, yesterday in London, we were paying respects to a very remarkable woman Baroness uh, Margaret Thatcher, whom uh, uh, here in Central Europe we remember perhaps sometimes more fondly than some people do in her own country. But that's because we remember that um, she had the courage to name a spade a spade when we were being oppressed. In 1982, for example, uh, under an initiative together with um, President Ronald Reagan called Let Poland Be Poland, she said that Poles have reminded us in the West of the precious quality of our own freedom. They who know what it is like to live without it. Indeed, we knew what it was like to live without it, and we still know it. And that's why the moment communism crumbled and free and fair elections could take place in our countries, all of us strove to join the European communities and the North Atlantic Alliance, structures that for decades were out of our reach against our will. Today, with security still being one of our primordial concerns, we are NATO's staunchest advocates and allies. Dr. Zbigniew Brzezinski, who is with us today and who I'm 
uh, warmly welcome, delivered a lecture back in uh, May 1989 in which he warned of the vacuum that the countries that today make up the Visegrad group may find themselves in. And he advised stronger cooperation among Central European countries as a solution. We heeded his advice, even though um, the vacuum did not materialize. With the formation of the Visegrad group, not only did we set up a permanent cooperation mechanism, but we also created a platform which allows us to build and promote a globally recognizable V4 brand. Today, all of our countries share the uh, experience of a successful transformation. By uh, 2017, it is estimated our collective GDP will surpass 1.1 trillion US dollars, an increase of 26% on 2010 which is something in today's conditions, which is to say that um, the V4 would be on a par with Turkey, a recognized great power in its region, and one of the fastest growing economies in the world. And we remain a paragon of a peaceful transition to those who are going through um, transitions without peace, and we believe we have lessons to offer. And V4 has become not only about our shared history and common values, we now have real interests in common, of which later on, I hope, in our panel. Um, we also have security interests. Um, in 2011, our common military expenditures totaled $13.6 billion, which is also something. Poland's um, military budget has just exceeded that of Spain, and we are one of the very few NATO countries that has increased military spending during the crisis. The creation of a Visegrad EU battle group demonstrates the V4's strengths and the willingness to cooperate in the field of common security and defense policy. Our readiness to fulfill the political and moral commitments that stem from our NATO membership has already been tested. We stood with our allies in the difficult missions in Iraq and Afghanistan. The North Atlantic Alliance remains the bedrock of our security, but we are also determined to develop defense policy mechanisms within the European Union. And in doing so, we should be guided by the notion of smart defense. Together with the other V4 countries and the French president and the German Chancellor, we recently discussed the issue in Warsaw on March the 6th, and we in intend to um, go along with that initiative to develop it. I'm very glad that Globsec um, is um, getting bigger and bigger. I'd like to thank uh, our Slovak hosts. We are proud to be associated, and I hope we have a great conference. Thank you. Thank you very much.